So I set up things, like I tried to show you the way that you should set up. You don't have to set things up exactly this way, but this is how I do it. It's, you just need to be organized in the way that you do things. Because there's a lot of moving files from one folder to the other. Uh, so just be organized is my advice. So this is my completed run. Let's do one blank slate, okay? So can you talk about what you have there, Jan? Yeah. So this is the way I set things up. I make a full directory. There's nothing in here right now. I make a subdirectory. There's nothing in there yet. And then I put all my Python scripts on the outside. Where did you get those? I'm about to show you. You download that, these scripts from that subdomain website I showed you. You unzip everything. And when you unzip everything, it looks like this. There are four scripts there. You copy these from here into here. In my full directory, what do I want? What's that? The, uh, the HPC file, right? Sure, yeah, I do want that. So let's put that in there. And your port file? I'm just gonna put all of these. Actually, I only need these two. So I want all these, right? You want to use like JPC use our draw compile. Compile. Yeah. Yeah. But I can give you the source code. Okay, so this 15 is exactly the one that you download for now. We're gonna make some changes to this. Well actually I should say I'm running Floyd. I'm not running Isabel. So I made some changes to this based on that, which has been covered, but just to reiterate, you want to change your storm start date, right? I'm changing the storm. I want to make sure my number What's of- What's the grade review that she's giving to you guys right now? Mm -hmm. So, I'll you know, she's starting from a port 15 that had whatever storm it was, and now she's adapting to your own storm. In this case, the storm. Right. So whatever she's changing is what you guys need to change. You guys, sh you should have a port 15 that you used for that Isabel tutorial that ran. I mean, in theory, you should have a port 15 <laughs> that you ha you are comfortable with. So, so once you get that 15, you can go ahead and just change the date. So what 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 is important about the, what is the 15 link to? Really, that's what you're asking. It's linked to the Titan version, right? Titan it is exactly, it. which is linked to your mesh. Your tide information is defined like the locations of all these tidal forcing constituents are based on your mesh. Specifically, actually, in this run, I'm only including the M2 tide, which I think is like the main moon tide. Yeah. And um, there's two things with the tides. There's the forcing constituents that start at the open boundary, that start at the big ocean boundary, and then there are forcing frequencies that go throughout the run, okay? So all of these down here are values for the M2 forcing frequency at the open boundary. But aren't all those frequencies tied? Like, so, let's say, because did that port 15 come from running FMS? Like, you ran MSS and selected like port 15 yeah. at work? Yeah. And you ran IRE, and now you want to run Floyd, so Floyd happened at a different time. So but I changed this right here. But then won't, won't all the elevations and all? No, these are, these M2 values are, well, if you want to change your mesh, you need to change these. If you don't want to change your mesh, but you want to change your storm, no relationship. You're good to go. You're kind of dependent. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking we'd have to go back to the oh. MS. 
to get the size for yeah, yeah, yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, Sorry. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They are time dependent. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's you true. Have to read yeah. Those. I hope on the papers you wrote. Yeah. 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 All you have to change an estimate, you don't even need to load your storm, you just need to tell it when to start the tides. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 So you can't just change the one date, you have to go back and get all the... You want to look at your yeah. total number of run days, because different storms have different storm track files, and maybe your track file is 10 days, so you want to have this be 10 days. You. I mean, you should always check these, you know, where do you want your stations? Where do you want to record elevation values? Where do you want to record uh, all this other stuff, right? Why does this say 45? I want to run every 15 minutes. And that's the number of time steps. Right. So my, my time step value here is 20 seconds. So, 20 seconds times 45 is 900 seconds, 15 minutes, right? Okay, so that's my port 15. Uh, what else? So the port 15 did not change. 20. Sorry? The port 15 did not change because of the set of name. Did we change anything? We're not even there yet. No, we're, we're going to. So we're going to. Yeah. Okay, so far we did. 422 for Floyd. And my port 14. So all these go in here. My full run. Okay. In my subdomain folder, I'm going to put that shape file. multiple subdomains at once. If you wanted to do multiple subdomains, this is where you need to set it up. If I wanted to do that, I would have not just one subdomain folder, but I'd have as many as I want. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to open Putty. Okay. The shapefile is active. Is GIS shapefile or are we just calling this text no, file? No, it called, it's called a shapefile, and I'm calling it that because that's what this user guide calls it. But yeah, this is not a GIS a shape, shape file. file. No. It's actually an X and Y and a radius It's file. a shape comma file. Got it's it. a file that describes the shape of your subdomain. Gotcha. That's all it is. So can you make that without GIS and just put that extension? Well, so she only went to GIS to figure herself out and to figure out well, where the coordinates for that center of the and circle and what the radius was. Oh. Right? But you don't get this file that yeah. the file. Unless she has a script that creates that, she doesn't. Oh, okay, that makes sense. If you know where, if you know where your X and Y is, yeah. you, if you know your radius, Google Map, whatever it is, you can do that. Yeah. It's just giving you a more comprehensive way to do it, because then you have the mesh, and then you can really see where you're going. So. Okay. subdomain, okay? So I'm going to cd into my subdirectory. Here's another thing I should do first, just to make sure. These are already executable, but this is an important step, right? 